Yeah, they all will make believe Don't lock me much more to give don't lock me up am i not enough for you to see me Well guys, look how bloody foggy it is. It is insane how foggy it is. Now, welcome to another solo series. Now, I can't wait to get this underway because it's a nice little two-nighter. I've got a Monday off and I've got my best bloody mate here with me. This is Charlie. He's my little English cross American staffy. He's a bloody beauty. He's actually quite old. Um, he'd be getting close, to maybe uh, 11 and a half, maybe close to 12. He's come along because this isn't a national park. This is, this is sort of a free-for-all, so there's no 1080 baits where I'm going. Uh, but he basically stays near camp anyway, so he's still got so much bloody life in him, this little bugger. So it's good to have you along, mate. We've got some nice cook-ups for you this weekend, champion. <laughs> so I am heading out to the Helena and Aurora Ranges for this trip. It is freezing right now, not really vest weather. It's about five degrees at the moment. Super foggy, but that I, I've always thought that that might mean um, a nice sunny day because it does say foggy then sunny So I've got to find firewood on the way to each site But I can't wait to show you these Helena and Aurora ranges because I've been here before But I haven't really sort of got me nose right into the actual ranges itself um, So this is all pretty much new for me as well. So let's see what we get up to on the way Thank you for watching. Thanks for coming along. I really really hope you enjoy it we will see what we get up to. Thanks, guys. Charlie, come on. Now, imagine after the week we've had in Perth and how wet it was. I imagine it might be pretty damp out here, but um, so far it seems pretty good. I mean, I'm not sure um, just yet, but I don't think there's gonna be anything hectic as far as full drive goes. But you know, you never bloody know. Um, some of these tracks can get really, really soft just because of the um, that red clay dirt, it gets really soft. So because I am solo, I will be over cautious. Any mud puddles that I do see, I'll be looking for a way around it or I'll also be looking to poke it and stuff like that. Um, but let's just see how we go. I'm just blown away, man, at the fog here. And it's freaking freezing. I'm going to throw my hoodie on in a minute, I think. But I've just started to get that feeling, you know, that beautiful feeling of sort of um, being alone. And it's something that I've, I reckon I'm slowly getting used to. And it's, well, I'm not really alone. I've got my old mate here. But um, it's something I'm definitely getting used to. And it's getting more and more beautiful each time I come out here. But I'll try and explain how I'm feeling to you guys as I go because I, I just, I've had a, <laughs> I'm gonna sound like an, a, a, an idiot here, but I've had a few guys uh, message me and say, oh, you know, I wanted to try solo and stuff like that. And I've said, you know, do it, man, it'll change your life. But 
um, I wanted to sort of maybe explain how I'm feeling as the trip goes on um, just to sort of maybe give you a bit of an insight of you know what it's like um, not as though I'm a seasoned solo driver but I'm bloody getting there <laughs> anyway keep powering on just more sights to see and I'll think about firewood a little bit later on so now straight away about two or three k's into this track I've found that I'm hitting a few of these little small puddles and believe it or not I know it sounds windy but they get slippery as I mean you can just see from the build up there but so um, I'm thinking straight away I'll just lock these in case I need to put it in a full drive and also I'm going to let it down to 25 uh, pound um, just to make it easier on the corrugations for the 800 million time that you've heard <laughs> all right pulled over because it's just a um a little mark that i found on the map and this is meant to be called um uh clarkson flat now it looks like there's almost some there was some water running through at one stage so be, you, you can tell there actually was because everything is super green around here um nice char putting me to shame over there <laughs> um so i thought it's amazing these places you probably don't notice much um when you're with a group um so i'm just going to take the opportunity to get out and go for a bit of a walk um because i can hear a crap load of wildlife like i was noticing back there i didn't hear too much but it's pretty abundant here um i don't know feeling pretty good i, I must admit I, I think i might get a beer out it's lunch Ew, oh shit it's about 11 30 now i'm going to turn that travel buddy on now before i leave because I'm only going to be walking for about 10-15 minutes, but I think this might be a beer stop, or as we like to call it in our group, tyre checkpoint. <laughs> I reckon it'll look really nice from above. Anyway, time to bloody um, crack a can. Thank you, Shelter. I think I'll go with a lager. I've been loving this lager lately, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's become me bloody go-to, I'll be honest. Um, and it's nice, actually, I've started drinking the XPA, which is the extra pale ale. And because it's a mid-strength, it's nice just to sip on every now and then. Um, but I am a lager man. But I can't wait until summer, because I was speaking to Tom from Shelter, and he was saying, when you do your beach trips and that in summer we're going to give you some summer sour because this summer sour, I'm pretty sure I like it just as much as this um, lager. That was the first um, uh, first can that I tried from them. So anyway, let's go for a walk. Come on, mate. See what I mean? For bloody 11, he still moves like a, like a bloody four-year-old. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, this way, mate. Oh. Come, mate. Let's go over here. Ooh, super soft. Come on. Oh, nearly got bogged, bud. Where are you going? Oh, imagine having a dog smell out here. He'd bloody love it. I think I'll stay here for a bit, let him have a good run around. Be good for the old bugger.
Righto, that's nice. Beautiful little walks. It's nice just to stop for a couple of walks like that as you're going along, you know. Stop and smell the roses type of thing, but um, I'm noticing uh, with traveling with Charlie a bit more that I have to make sure that I force myself to keep him hydrated, keep him fed and stuff, because he's just running around like a bloody madman. <laughs> um, but yeah, lunchtime now. Got a couple of pies, a couple of those, um, I posted like a couple of, would, by the time this video comes out, probably be a month ago or so, but uh, my wife made some um, cheeseburger pies and my God, absolutely unreal. It's basically the fattiest mince you can find, the best quality mince as well, um, in a pie with, you know, melted cheese, um, like ketchup, little ketchup, tomato sauce, um, mustard, pickle, white onion. Uh, she's put all that in there and it's honestly the best pie I've ever had. So I'm gonna put these bad boys in. Um, and Charlie's just had his uh, his bickies. So I'll get these in, probably take about an hour because they're at fridge temp now, so that's good. Um, take about an hour and by the time we get to sort of the ranger's area, I think it'll be ready. So um, if you find yourself with a pie maker, <laughs> bloody try these they're unbelievable i promise you they are as long as you get the fatty mints that's what it's all about baby that's what it's all about well there's the range there up ahead in perfect view if those clouds stick around which i sort of hope they do I think the sun will come out during the day, but I hope those clouds stick around for this Arvo because I reckon um, it'll be a ripper of a sunset. So it's really bloody awesome to drive up on these on such a nice clear day. I actually want to try and do like a full circle around the whole range, but I don't know if the track will allow me to. Couple more minutes, I reckon. Just down the road here, we'll find an opening. So I've just gone down the actual main track um, that has, that sort of circles the ranges itself, and I'm about a K into it. And then there's other tracks that sort of look like they head towards the range, like as in they duck in, and they're well driven. I must, I must clarify that they're well driven, so, I'm on my way in now on an offshoot. <laughs> Let's see what bloody happens. Looks well driven. Maybe there'll be some ripper campsites in here. I don't know. I definitely want to keep looking around a little bit though. Somewhere nice to have lunch would be good. Geez, um, if it was wet in here, you'd have some bloody good fun. Lucky I've picked a pretty dry weekend, actually. There's campsites bloody everywhere here. So it doesn't show these tracks on my Hema. 
But this looks like I might get a nice campsite if I really wanted to at the bottom of the ranges. So I mean, if you don't get out here, I, I feel like I'm alone. If you don't get out here and check it, you know what I mean? You'll never know that you, you know, you could have missed some gold spots, eh? Hey? Starting to smell those pies now, so I better find somewhere to stop. So this seems to be where the uh, the track stops. Um, it looks like it keeps sort of ducking in further there, but I'm on quite an incline now. <laughs> sort of looks like it goes into nothing just there, so I'll respect it and I'll leave it alone. I can see tire tracks still, but I'll just leave it alone. There's heaps more to check out anyway. Um, you could camp at about eight spots on the way here, which is no worries at all. I'm perched here just underneath, you know, the biggest like the biggest hill here, which is good. So I'll pick this spot to have my lunch. Look at that. But probably what the plan is, I just want to sit here, I think, and, and enjoy the view. There's like a bit of a cave up there. Um, but the thing is, I've had the drone out. Because I was at um, Murchison Station last trip, it's, it's almost like, because I didn't have my drone I don't want to overdo it on this one, but there's just so much to see, man. There's a cave just up there. Um, so I'm probably going to enjoy a beer or two here. Let Charlie out. He's had his lunch. Let him chill out around here. There's so much to see for him. And then probably after this, I want to keep heading around the range. So I'm on this side. I think I'm on the... I'd be on the southern side of the range. I want to get right around the other side. Uh, tonight and then find a camp spot over there the next thing that I think I'll have in mind after leaving here because it'll be around one two o'clock is firewood um, and there's an abundance of it I'll only just take whatever I'm going to use tonight um, but it is still cold during the day so I'm just going to use uh, I'm going to need a fair bit I think so I've got the chainsaw with me I'll make sure I don't cut anything that looks like it's been used by animals or whatever um, try and respect that as much as I can I guess I'll uh, just take the dead stuff cut it down into pieces I'll throw it up there so I've got plenty of wood for tonight enough of me babbling I'm just gonna sit there and enjoy this view with my cheeseburger pie get it up ya Okay, <laughs> so we can assume that doesn't go anywhere. Probably does, but I just want to err on the side of caution and not, not go. Because if I get stuck there, mate, I'm stuffed. And not forgetting I haven't got a winch, so I don't want to push me luck. Um, so... I'm gonna back down and keep going on the other main track. Right guys, so I followed that track all the way as far as it could go, the main track, and it ended up um, in like sort of, what would you call it? A valley in the middle of two large hills here and there was someone camped there and they look like they've been camping there for like two months um, good on them uh, solar set up full awning set up I didn't see anyone there but as soon as I got to their campsite I had to sort of turn around I never like to invade anyone's campsite or camp like right close to anyone just because I think that's the reason anyone goes bloody camping um, so the options I have now are to uh, backtrack, that's number one option. <laughs> uh, backtrack along the track I've already been and find a campsite 
it's still pretty early. It's around 2.30. Um, so what I reckon I'm going to do, I'm going to keep going all the way back um, and then uh, head the other way, which I sort of... I, I turned right at the junction to go down this track. I'm going to turn left, um, which will lead me around the, the western side of the ranges. So I... I've got nothing but time, which is good, but... This drive to here was phenomenal. Um, just campsites everywhere, which is good. So anyway, I'm probably going to need about an hour to get from here back to the junction. So time to power on, and then I'm going to think about firewood. So I'll see you guys when I'm getting firewood. Cheers. Well guys, I'm on my way back um, to the other side of the ranges there um, and literally just seeing a couple of limbs here. This one and then that one over there. This almost looks like it's blocking this track. <laughs> um, I literally only need a small amount of wood, so I'm just going to take that one limb off there and then I'll help myself to that one over there. Um, I think it's a good idea instead of just stuffing up, you know, limbs and that over there. I'm just going to take a little bit from here. It's... It, this track literally just diverts from that one there, so good amount there, so I don't think it's going to stuff anything up. I'll get into it. Well, this will do. <laughs> Jeez, I'm, I'm so surprised at how many options there are. The good thing, in a way, is that a lot of these tracks that I've tried to take up to the main hills, <laughs> bless you there, champion, don't really lead to anything. They sort of end up as, as dead ends. So that's sort of good in a way that, you know, that gets reserved. This is gonna test the old bloody swag um, mattress. Grab that in. Grab that in. Thanks, bud.
beautiful and still, not a breath of wind. Got the swag set up, fire set up of course, first thing. Charlie's got his little jacket on, nice and cuddly there mate. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much now I'm just going to clean up the site. I've got plenty of firewood there. And then tonight, uh, I've got chops and vegetables for dinner. Pretty simple. A couple of nice chops here for you, Char, if you want them, mate. Better be quick, though. Yeah, right, huh? Just a quick recap on the day, like honestly, had the best day with me mate here. We explored most of the base of the actual range itself. We did not see anyone except for that bloke at the end of the, um, the end of the, the track there, which is where we turned around, you know? So to be honest with you, we just come back to a better spot. Like, um, the last time you would have seen us would have been perched up as far as I could go on the actual range itself. Um, and then we just come down to this nice little open spot. You're always on your own there, which is really great. So, I'm not going to drag this on, but the best part of today was seeing the range itself out of nowhere. Especially the way that I come in um, from Southern Cross and then from Nobbing. That, that is such a beautiful drive, like, honestly, and you can absolutely see that if it gets wet out here, those tracks become bloody wild. Um, even with the small amount of rain that they might have had out here and the small amount of time that it has had to dry, it is still mucky, it is still wet, and it's still sticky on the, on the tyres and that, so... I don't know, I don't know, there's just, I've never passed so many nice spots and just driven past them because I reckon, I reckon I passed about 20, honestly 20 offshoots that would have just shot into a beautiful spot at the base of this range, so I've just picked one in the Yavo, which has been perfect timing, 2.30 in the Yavo, come here, get the fire ready, um, actually make me think of it, I'm going to get the hot plate on, alrighty. Get that on there. Very simple dinner tonight. Um, while that's heating up, I'm gonna throw these on before it gets too hot because those freaking ashes are steaming. Whatever that wood is that I um, cut up, it is super, super solid, super warm, and is smokeless. Hey, mate. So I've got potato scallops. Portobello mushrooms, broccolini, and some nice bloody lamb chops uh, from David Cutting Edge. And also, I've got these two condiments. So this is the rub, this is Lane's Magic Dust. Now Dave has always raved on about this, and it's unbloody believable. I'm gonna throw this on the, um, on the taters. That hasn't been on there much, and it's sizzling already. Straight up though guys, you need to get out of here. This is such a beautiful little gem out here. It's so good. I'm gonna let them cook. I'll get the um, I'll get the chops on and I'm gonna put the same rub on the chops. And then the, at the end I've got Lane's um sort of white. It's like a wing sauce, but shit, it's good with everything, eh? I'm gonna let them sizzle a little bit, flip them till they're nice and brown, throw this on at the very end let them soften up it's nothing exciting tonight is it char you don't look excited um but it's basically cook dinner go to bed because it's quite late now uh, i've been sitting by the fire just chilling out so tomorrow big day tomorrow where um i want to see the rest of the north western side of the ranges 
and then from there I'm gonna head back and show you a couple of spots on the way back and especially on the way back there's a couple of spots that I've yet to see myself and I want to explore them so I can't wait it's been an awesome day today even better tomorrow guys Stick around and I'll see you in bloody part two. Thanks so much, guys. See you in the next episode. Let's keep